Hello viewers, the pain of not having a child creates lot of social stigma and depression to the childless couple. There are various reasons as to why they end being childless. The issues could be just in general a fertility issue wherein they are unable to make their own child or it could be an issue of recurrent pregnancy losses wherein they keep losing pregnancy recurrently. So to look into that we need to know what are all the causes of recurrent pregnancy loss. The recurrent pregnancy loss could happen at any time during the 10 months of the pregnancy period. So for convenience we could divide it into two, three. One the first three months, the second three months and the last three months. The first three months mostly deals with issues like a chromosomal problem wherein the embryo per se is affected by a chromosomal issue and could fail repeatedly in plantation. So how do we go about with this issue? We need to check the karyotyping of the couple and see whether it's a dominant issue that is being inherited to the embryo or whether it's a recessive problem and look at detailed counselling of the couple and if needed we must have to counsel them for an embryo biopsy. So the embryo biopsy could be either a polar body biopsy or it could be a trophoectoderm biopsy. So mostly in day to day practice we go ahead with a trophoectoderm biopsy to look at the karyotyping of the embryo. So following this what are the reasons could be for the first three months of miscarriage we need to understand other causes could be hormonal. It could be due to imbalance of a thyroid hormone or a prolactin hormone or could be due to altered glycemic levels wherein the female partner could be a diabetic and due to uncontrolled diabetes she may be losing the pregnancy very frequently and recurrently. The other rare causes in the early pregnancy demise could be hydrosulfinges wherein we have the toxic fluid leaking from the fallopian tube into the uterine cavity and not allowing the embryo to get implanted. Various other causes of the uterus per se like fibroids indenting into the endometrial cavity, polyps which are bigger in size could also contribute to the pregnancy loss and a recurrent pregnancy loss is a more attribution of an indenting myoma of the cavity. And then the anatomical defects of the uterus inherited by birth which is also a major reason this could be either due to the abnormal shape in the uterus or could be a normal uterus with a septum, a partial or a complete septum wherein the implantation happens in the avascular zone of the septum leading to pregnancy loss or it could be due to various other causes of the abnormal shapes of the uterus which leads to recurrent implantation failures or recurrent miscarriages. So looking at all these causes there are very few reasons where we could correct the pregnancy loss that is happening in the early trimester. So looking at the second trimester which extends between 4th to 6th month the most important cause of second trimester pregnancy loss is cervical incompetence. So how do we correct the cervical incompetence? When I say cervical incompetence I mean to say that the internal os of the uterus is not strong enough to hold the pregnancy until term. So we apply a cervical stitch with the muslin tape at the level of the internal os. This could be either a McDonald's or a Shirodkar stitch which is left in situ till the female partner crosses term pregnancy and once she reaches around 35 to 36 weeks the cervical stitch is removed and she is allowed to get into labor. So the most important cause of pregnancy losses between the 4th to 6th month in the second trimester is cervical incompetence and the other causes in the second and third month could be either preterm labor or intrauterine death. Preterm labor may be habitual either due to the abnormal shape of the uterus or the habitual way of her getting into the preterm labor due to various other mechanisms. So if she is a person who is at high risk of getting into preterm labor, we need to identify, prepare her with tocolytics, with natural progesterone supplement quite earlier and let her go through the pregnancy period 
keep the embryo or keep the fetus ready to deliver by 32 to 34 weeks or even 20 to 30 weeks at the earliest by priming the lungs with steroids antenatal steroids so that they do not get into respiratory distress syndrome once delivered so looking at the second and the third trimester preterm labor seems to be the most common cause and intrauterine death is the other cause so intrauterine death could be either due to antiposphospholipid antibody syndrome wherein you may either have a zero positive female partner or a zero negative female partner if it is a zero positive female partner it's very easy to identify them and treat them with aspirin and heparin supplementation if it's, if it's a zero negative female partner who is just coming with a typical history of recurrent pregnancy losses or with intrauterine deaths then we will have to put them on empirical aspirin and heparin supplementation and see to that the pregnancy period moves easily and repeated CTG evaluation, ultrasound Doppler evaluation becomes very essential when it's a case of recurrent pregnancy loss mainly in the third trimester. With vigilant antenatal surveillance and counselling it will be able to pick up the issue at any trimester which would pinpoint us to the etiology and help us to treat the couple and come out of the recurrent miscarriages. The newly come treatment for recurrent miscarriages in the first trimester which is due to antiposphospholipid antibody syndrome or due to an immunological cause leading to the rejection of the embryo is husband lymphocyte transfer wherein the husband's blood is withdrawn the lymphocytes are segregated buffered and it is then injected into the female body to develop resistance and by injecting this husband lymphocyte into the female partner's system it is easier for us to suppress the rejection immunologically that is happening to the embryo that is being considered as foreign body and by this way the acceptance of the embryo and the growth of the embryo becomes normal.